Hey guys, welcome. Yeah, so in the video where we introduced the P-series, we said that in general, uh, there's no way for us to figure out uh, the value of a particular P-series. But we said that when P is equal to 2, uh, we have this infinite series, so this P-series where P is equal to 2, and we know that its value is pi squared divided by 6. And uh, there are generally two proofs that are provided for this fact. One of them is contemporary, a more modern proof, and the other is much older, and I believe by Euler. So I'm going to give you the older proof. So um, to start, we know that the Maclaurin series for sine x tells us that sine x can be uh, expressed as an infinite polynomial like this, right? Okay, cool. Now, it turns out that sine x could also be represented as an infinite product like this. Now, if you want to get some insight as to why sine x could be uh, written like this as an infinite product of these factors or factors that look like these guys, uh, why you could do this? Well, first, um, sine x can be written as an infinite polynomial, and we know that polynomials can be factored. Polynomials can be factored by um, their zeros, right? Now, sine x has zeros at zero, at plus or minus pi, at plus or minus two pi, and so on. But wait, this here, this factoring shows that sine x has a zero at zero from this factor x. And then from this factor, uh, it's equivalent to saying that sine x has a zero at plus or minus pi, because if you set one minus x squared over pi squared equal to zero, you're gonna get x is equal to uh, plus or minus pi. And then from this factor, um, x is going to equal plus or minus two pi. So that's a zero that we get from this factor and so on. So um, one um, easy way for you to reckon uh, why you could write sine as uh, an infinite product of factors like this is by seeing that uh, this writing of sine has the same zeros as what we expect for sine, which is zero plus or minus pi plus or minus two pi and so on. Yeah. Okay. Basically this here, the Maclaurin series for sine and this here are the same. Hmm. That gives us an idea. What about if we concentrate on the coefficient of x cubed here? We know that using the Maclaurin series, um, that the coefficient of x cubed is negative 1 over 3 factorial, which is negative 1 over 6. What's the coefficient of x cubed here in this other expression of sine? Well, to see the coefficient of x cubed here, let's do a little bit more work and the factored uh, version of sine and the infinitely factored version, I should say, right? Like in the infinite product that represents sine. Now here, uh, the first thing I've done is I've uh, distributed this x here to this first factor. So I get x times 1, which is x, and then minus x cubed over pi squared. Ah, so uh, there is a coefficient of x cubed, at least in this part, right? But we're going to have to collect more terms to make the coefficient of x cubed in this expression of sine. This isn't the only coefficient of x cubed, because look here, uh, if I distribute... Uh, this whole factor x minus x cubed over pi squared to this guy well when I multiply by 1 I'm gonna retain this this here which is x minus x cubed over pi squared times 1 is gonna be x minus x cubed over pi squared and then I'm gonna have to multiply this here which is x minus x cubed over pi squared to this guy right and so when I do what I'm gonna get is this so now I see that there is one more um, coefficient of x cubed I could collect after distributing this here to uh, this guy here, right? Now we're going to continue in this manner and we're going to continue distributing, right? Now here we've got four terms, one, two, three, four. So if we take this whole thing and multiply it to this binomial here, well first when we multiply by one we're going to get this whole thing back and then we're going to multiply this whole thing by this guy here, which is uh, negative uh, x squared over 9 uh, pi squared. And ignore this one right here. That shouldn't be there, right? Okay, uh, to typo this one right here, right? But you get it. You probably reckon. It's not doing any harm anyway. It's a 1. But yeah, basically, like, if we keep distributing, right, we're going to get more uh, coefficients of x cubed. Like I said, when we 
uh, multiply all of uh, these four terms by one, we're going to get these four terms back. But when we multiply these four terms by this guy here, um, specifically, as I said, uh, minus x squared over 9 pi squared, we're going to get one additional x cubed um, coefficient. That's from multiplying this x to this here. And that coefficient that we're going to uh, get in addition to these two coefficients of x cubed we've already collected is going to be x, the coefficient of x times uh, negative x squared over 9 pi squared. And so that's going to be uh, negative 1 over 9 pi squared. Ah, we're getting the hint. We're getting the hint. And obviously, uh, when we multiply any of the other uh, three terms uh, and the four terms here by this guy, we're not going to get an x cubed. So we don't have to worry about that. Okay, so we proceed in this manner to see that um, and this other expression of sine x, the coefficient of x cubed is going to be made from negative x cubed over pi squared, that's this guy, and then minus x cubed over 4 pi squared, and then as I already said, the next one will be from multiplying this x to this minus x squared over 9 pi squared, so that's going to be minus x cubed over um, 9 pi squared, and as you can imagine, the next uh, coefficient of uh, x cubed that we're going to collect is going to be minus x cubed over 16 pi squared. And the next one after that, uh, unsurprisingly, will be minus uh, x cubed over 25 pi squared and so on, right? Uh, okay, cool, cool, cool. So uh, we're saying, and this uh, other expression of um, sine x as opposed to the Maclaurin series, we're going to have to add up infinitely many uh, terms to gather the coefficient of x cubed and those terms are going to continue in this pattern here right um, the, uh, the terms that are going to make the coefficient of x cubed but wait they all have a negative so I can factor out the negative on the left side and they all have an x cubed so I can factor out the x cubed on the right side okay now it makes it very easy to compare the coefficient uh, from here um, of x cubed to the coefficient from the Maclaurin series um, and namely the coefficient of x cubed from the Maclaurin series, right, which we already said is negative one sixth. So by comparison, since this sign is equal to the sign here, it must mean that uh, negative parentheses one over pi squared plus one over four pi squared plus one over nine pi squared plus blah 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 dot 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 has to equal uh, negative one sixth. That is, this must follow from everything else we've said. Okay, cool. So then we can cancel the negatives on either side of the equal sign and say this must follow. And then next we see that uh, all of the um, uh, terms on the right side have a pi squared in the denominator. So we can multiply both sides of this equation by pi squared and simplify it a little bit. And when we do, look at what we get. Ah, the desired result. We get that um, 1 um, or 1 over 1 plus 1 fourth plus 1 ninth plus 1 sixteenth plus dot 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 is pi squared over 6. six. Pi squared over 6. In my rush, I was going to say pi squared over 16 and botch up the end, but I didn't. All right. Um, I hope you enjoyed this, and I hope you thought that this was as cool as I thought it was. And um, happy uh, new year. May uh, 2019 bring the best uh, for you and me. Yeah? All right. Keep watching. Take care.